But for the most part, this is all Nacho. And at the end, uh, Michael Mando, who plays Nacho, gives just a breathtaking monologue. <laughs> Ring, ring. Hello? Ah, yes. Tim, great news. It's Ghost Rider. It's for you. Hello, Nick. How you doing? Better call Saul Glyph's Cage. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Bomb Squad Call Saul. We are talking about episodes three and four of... Ba -ba -ba -ba, Wanda... What the fuck? Did I just go back in time? <laughs> what the hell just happened to me? <laughs> We are talking about episodes three and four of ba -ba 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 -ba, Better Call Squall, where we are talking about episodes three and four of ba -ba 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 -ba, Better Call Saul. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, for the viewers back home, that actually took me like seven tries. <laughs> so we'll get right into it with episode three, which... Episode three, Tim, I think might be my favorite episode of the show so far. It's definitely the one that's made me cry. Yeah, that that episode was definitely a uh, big send-off to our good friend, Mr. Nacho. Libre. True, that one. Jack Black. Uh, yeah. And that, that did answer one of our questions from last week, which is, how's he going to get out of this mess? He isn't. He, he, he is not. And you know what? That's realistic. I feel like most shows would, like created opening for their character to escape but not this one when nope. he I, I texted you it when he called his dad and started crying i think i sent you a, a, a mean reaction that i just said he is going to die so for the most part the episode revolves around nacho there is of course the subplot with jimmy and kimmy trying to pull their scam on howard and they get an unlocker on his car we'll talk about what they do with that in episode four because it's really funny what they do um yep fucked up but funny but for the most part, this is all Nacho. And at the end, uh, Michael Mando, who plays Nacho, gives just a breathtaking monologue. You were dead and buried, and I had to watch this asshole bring you back. So when you are sitting in your shitty nursing home, and you're sucking down on your jello night after night for the rest of your life, you think of me, you twisted fuck. At mm. the end, I mean, that is some, like... Like, what was, what was maybe the biggest Heisenberg monologue in Breaking Bad? I'm trying to think. The, I am the one who knocks, I would think. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying it's that level. You know, it's that good. It has the highest uh, IMDb rating for any of the episodes of Season 6 so far, uh, for good reasons. Yeah, I just... I, I'm hard-pressed to say anything more other than um, Nacho has been one of my favorite characters of the show. And I think he's a great example of what I think Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul really show is that... And obviously this is common sense, but I think when Breaking Bad started, this was more of a kind of sort of taboo idea. Uh, criminals aren't necessarily bad people. Mm -hmm. And non-criminals aren't necessarily good people. Because I think it's very safe to say Nacho is like a good person. Yeah, no, there is even, like, a, a whole, like, uh, speech that Mike did, I think, in Season 2. I've known good criminals and bad cops, bad priests, honorable thieves. You can be on one side of the law or the other. Criminal or non-criminal, you get to decide if you're a good person or a bad person. Yeah, and Nacho decided he was a good person. That final call between him and his father got me to tear up. I, I actually did cry at that because I did realize he's going to die today, isn't he? I thought he might have only because I saw a single piece of fan art where Nacho was blooming like a flower, and I didn't know what that meant, but then I thought about it and I went, oh, this was pointed out to me after the fact. You know how the cold open was just that shot of a flower? Yeah. Did you notice where that flower was? Uh, it's like right where the thing happened. It's the exact spot where Nacho died. And uh, yeah. that flower is like apparently symbolically important in some culture, I think ancient Aztec culture, to be like a, a symbol of rebirth, a symbol of peace sort of thing. So I think that was really powerful. Uh, great episode overall. It's crazy to think that they killed Nacho off with 10 episodes to go. Yeah. So they wrapped up that plot line, and I'm just sitting here thinking, oh my god, what else do they have in store? Uh, which, something else they have in store is episode 4, where, uh, as I said in the group chat, it starts off, and Jimmy, he has the drip. 
He is dripped out seven ways to Sunday, my guy. Yep, he is in Bull Hamlin attire. He makes it look good. There's a lot going on in this episode. We have multiple minor characters from Breaking Bad making appearances. I was very surprised that we got a cameo from Spooch. Guy who got his head smashed by ATM is in this episode. And you, yeah. you look at the you look at the pictures of him here and the pictures of him. It's like, damn, meth fucked him up. It's been ten years. He still somehow looks older in Breaking Bad. It brings up to one of my favorite things of Break of Brib uh, Better Call Saul, which is every throwaway line in Breaking Bad has meaning to it. You know. Speaking of Nacho, you know where Nacho and Lalo comes from? Fucking throwaway line Saul says when he has a gun pointed to him at those two when Jesse and Walter and Ski Mask. No, it wasn't me. It was Ignacio. He's the one. Lalo didn't send you? No, Lalo? Who? Oh, thank God. So Jimmy and Kimmy's plan is really coming to a head now. The first thing was plant the seeds of a cocaine addiction and now show him just being nutso with hookers in public. And this is where Wendy comes in! I thought that that scene was just very funny. Just like watching the scheme unfold as Saul's just running around town trying to get this whole thing going. It reminds me how when they have originally pitched Better Call Saul to AMC, the idea was it would be a comedy spinoff with Bob Odenkirk doing his full Saul persona. Which, don't get me wrong, that probably would have been a very fun show. Yeah. I don't think it would have been this amazing show that we've gotten. Kimmy and Mike finally meet. And Mike says, because I think you're made of sterner stuff when talking to Kim. Why are you telling me this and not him? Because I think you're made of sterner stuff. Again, it's just the dynamic we talked about on episode zero, Tim. Excuse yeah. you, my boyfriend said no pickles. It's also like, whoa, Gus is having them followed yeah that that kind of uh, also answers the question of uh, is the person howard's private investigator which turns out it's not it is not it was not <laughs> howard's private investigator at all uh it was gus's men which by the way gus's home setup paranoid little freak are those actors he's hiring? That interracial couple that pretends to live in the house? Is, are those just actors? Yeah, that, that's something I'm wondering. Because yeah, if so, sick fucking gig. Lalo's presence has been felt in these two episodes heavily. He has not shown up once, mm -hmm. but we as the audience are almost feeling paranoid. You know what I mean? We're almost like feeling what yeah. Gus feels like. He could pop up at any minute. Like at the very end of the episode when it's like, where's Lalo? And it cuts to Kimmy. I'm thinking, oh, fuck. No. Yeah, when when's this Jack in the Box coming out? Really big fan of these two episodes. I'm really gonna miss Nacho. Uh, he was a great character. Not quite my favorite character because my I think my favorite character in all of Breaking Bad is probably always gonna be Saul. Uh, but Nacho might have been one of my favorite new characters introduced in Better Call Saul. So I'll miss him. Uh, I'm mm. scared about Lalo, even though I know I know Gus lives. And Saul lives, and Mike lives, and yet I feel, I, I still feel like double checking myself on it because of just how well written the show is. What about you? Yeah, yeah, it might turn out that uh, Gus and Mike are actually just uh, like Terminator clones or something. That would be, you know what? If you say that, that sounds like, oh, that's horrible. They'd never do that. But if the writers of Better Call Saul wanted to do that, I think they could find a way to pull it off. It'd probably they, still they, be goofy, but they could pull it off. They make that ridiculous premise good. Yeah. So, what do you think the next two episodes have in store? you have any predictions for that at all? Well, I think we're going to see probably more of how this uh, thing with Howard is going to unfold. Because... Uh, they they were teasing the Ed Bagley Jr. character, like confronting Howard about it. I just need you to know that I know it wasn't me, Cliff. Yeah, I think that's gonna come to a head. Maybe not in the next episode, but the episode after that, I think that's when Howard is gonna start uh, taking the gloves off. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, because I remember there was a, a scene in the first trailer where he's like near a boxing ring. So yeah, yeah. So I wonder if he's actually going to try and fucking fist fight Jimmy. That, that is the future of uh, law practice. Is fist the fights. lawyers just the, the lawyers get in a boxing ring. They go a couple rounds. And uh, whoever wins, uh, they're, they're, that's, that, that's the winner of the trial. There you go. I think that would be a much more interesting legal system than the one we have. This past episode introduces the fact that the 
the stalling method Kim used on Davis um, worked so well that he's actually going for her like charity thing, which makes yeah. me wonder why are they introducing this? Mm-hmm. Which makes me wonder is th- is this specific part of it somehow involved with why she falls? Because I think after the episode one opening with the the bottle stopper, I think I can pretty much safely put the rest any ideas that Kim is there during Breaking Bad. Yeah. So I wonder if this charity thing is somehow blowing up in her face. What do you think? It could very well be that. Uh, and like you were mentioning, uh, the like cutaway when they mentioned Lalo. So it might be that he kills her. It, it, it could it could go down any of the, any of those roads. My only thing is, I feel like with what we know from Jimmy so far, I don't know if he could go full Saul if Kimmy died. Like I think the depression would eat him up. But I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to say. Maybe she does die, and that's I'm gonna freaking sob if she does. Yeah. Um. But you know who else? Uh, would make me cry if they died. Your mom. Uh, yes, and you! Thank you also very much for watching Volume 2 of The Bomb Squad Call Saul. Comment below and let us know what did you think of Episodes 3 and 4? Which was your favorite? Are you going to miss Nacho? Do you think Kim is going to become real and fight her actress Ray Seahorn to see who lives? Hit the like button so we know how much you like us. Hit the subscribe button so we know how much you love us. And hit the bell icon so you don't end up like Spooge in Breaking Bad. Thank you again also very much for watching. And we'll see you guys next time. the person watching slash not even listening because we don't release these audio only so i'm gonna try that one more time one more time one more time and i'll get it done well hopefully they're listening uh <laughs> they we have deaf viewers tim you're done i mean you're it, done it's true you're done um